Moving on, we are going to go into audio setup now. And again, it's going to ask us if you want to apply those changes. Yes. Hopefully you've gone through and done everything that I had done in that locations section, or at least everything that applied to you. If not, please review that video and go through that, or else you might encounter some problems later on. So audio setup, this is going to be where we're spending most of, the, of our time when we're in the preferences menu. There's a number of really important settings in here that, is, that are crucial to understand. So let's go a little bit slow and make sure that we're clear on that um, because we're going to have to come in here and change some things from time to time to make sure that things are uh, running smoothly. The first thing we see is the audio device tab. This is what sound card are you using for Studio One, both to play back your audio and to record it. So to play back and record, I'm using the Persona Studio 192 Mobile, which is the audio interface I've mentioned a few times. But yours may be the built-in output if you're using a laptop and the built-in input. This is basically the sound card that comes stock on your computer. And if you're using a Mac, then that's perfectly fine and will work for you even without an interface or anything else. You don't have to worry about it. It will be even better if you have an interface but it will still work perfectly without it, and I do it all the time. Now, if you're on a PC, it's a little bit different. Some PCs, especially laptops, don't have audio cards that are built for this kind of application, so they can have some hangups or problems. Fortunately, there is a solution to this, and it's an application or actually an audio driver called ASIO for All. Um, however, after some testing, I found that using this driver actually causes another problem, which basically only lets the audio card focus on one application at a time. So if you were trying to watch videos like this on the Lydian website, while also using Studio One, uh, you might encounter problems with that. So I've actually found another solution that goes along with ASIO for All using another app called Voice Meter. These two apps used together will actually solve the problem entirely and give you the best of both worlds. It's a little bit complicated to install, so I've provided a document that you can find underneath this video that you should definitely take a look at and just go step by step very carefully through that document and do as it says. Once you've completed that, you can come back here and then just make sure that you've set your playback device to voice meter, which is also detailed in the document. But just as a reminder, once that whole thing is done, voice meter will be your playback device. And then whenever I'm discussing device block size, which we're going to talk about in just a second, for you, that will be found in the ASIO for all driver window. And there you'll see a slider called ASIO buffer size. So ASIO buffer size is the same thing as device block size. Because when you're using voice meter for your playback device, you won't actually have access to change your device block size because ASIO for all will be overriding that, or voice meter will be overriding that with ASIO for all um, being used as its output. And you have to go into the ASIO for all menu to change it, which is super simple to do. And again, I describe how to do that in the document below this video. So. I would suggest that after this video, you go ahead and check out that document and download the necessary apps. It's all free. If you follow the document step by step, you should be able to get up and running with ASIO for All and Voice Meter, no problem. So different recording devices have different amounts of inputs. Again, an input is where you can take audio in from. So my audio interface has two inputs on the front and a couple others on the back. If you're using the built-in input on your laptop, then you probably only have one input, which is the built-in microphone on your laptop. So below this, we have device block size. Now, this is a very, very important setting. And this can also be adjusted through ASIO for All, if that's what you're using. They may call it buffer size. In many other applications, they call it buffer size. And in um, Studio One, we call it device block size. What this does basically is trade computer performance for lag or latency. If you've played video games before, you may know about lag when you're trying to do something and there's a lot of things on the screen at once 
and it seems like the controls you're moving are reacting really slowly on the uh, screen. Or if you try to have a video conversation with somebody on Skype or something, and you say something and it takes like 10 seconds before they hear you, that's lag. Lag is just the delay between the time that you try to do something and then when you see the result of that. The lower your device block size, the less lag you're going to have. Or the lower your buffer size, again, buffer size and device block size are the same thing. So the faster your computer is, the lower you can put this. And the more complicated your session becomes, the more instruments you have, the more effects you have, all that kind of stuff, the higher this has to go. And you're going to know when to change it because your audio is going to start crackling or skipping or making weird pops, all sorts of strange sounds. That's probably, probably because your device block size is set too low. So when we're recording, when we're trying to write the parts or compose the parts for our song, it's good to have this device block size set low, like 128, if you can, even 64, and that means you'll have almost no lag. So I'm at 256 right now, and it's telling me my input latency, which is lag, is 9 milliseconds. If I go down to 128, now it's at 6, and I go down even further, now I'm at 4. This is imperceptible. You won't even know that there's any lag, and it'll make it really easy to record all your parts. It will feel really natural. And as your session gets busier and you start to get more audio crackles and weird things going on, you're going to need to come in here to the Preferences menu and up this. Basically what this does is give your computer more time to process all the things that are going on in your session. Because it takes the computer time to process effects and instruments and things. So the more you have, the more time it takes. And if you don't give it enough time, which is the amount of samples, that's how much time, um, then it doesn't have time to complete it and the audio will crackle. So the rule of thumb is keep this as low as you can for as long as you can. As your session gets busier and you encounter problems, then up it to the next setting, the next setting, the next setting. By the time you get to the high settings, you're probably going to experience quite a bit of lag where you might hit a key and then half a second to a second later you're going to hear the sound. Or you move something and it won't update really fast. And that's just the way it has to be. There's no way around that. So it's good to know where this setting is because you're going to have to visit it frequently while you're composing. Below this, we have sample rate, which we set when we created our song. So I explained that there. We can't change this here, but in a different menu we can. We have bit depth, which we also set when we created the session. And then here we have the input latency and output latency of the whole computer uh, based on how um, our device block size is set and the device block size is set according to how much stuff is going on in the song. Release audio device in background. I never have to have this checked. The idea is that if you switch applications, it will let the, your sound card go and use the other application. But for the way I have my setup working, I never have to do this. It works no matter what, if I, even if I change applications. If you're using ASIO for all, you might have some problems for, with that, and then this might help you out. It depends on how your computer is set up. So you can try it on and off if you end up having problems when you're switching. Say you're trying to listen to a YouTube video to hear a song, and then you come back to Studio One, and the audio stops working, like in YouTube, or it stops working in Studio One. You can try ticking this on and off and, and see if that helps you. The last thing we'll look at is the processing tab, and I'm not going to go into, in, in, into depth about this right now. This is basically a really cool thing that exists in Studio One that doesn't exist in other similar applications yet anyway, um, which basically allows you to, even in a really busy song like I described, where you have to put your device block size high, you can still get really low lag, really low latency and it still had the session run smoothly without crackles. So this is a really cool um, piece of technology that we will talk about when we start composing our own sessions. Uh, but for now, we'll just know that it's here, and we're going to move on to external devices in the next video.